was a cold winter day on the streets of New Mombasa. The weather called for clear skies, but of course, rain. On a day like today, it only made my job harder. Lucky for me, I had Mark VI power armor on, but without it, I'd be very, very cold. The truth is that night, the weather wasn't the only thing that was cold. The trail had gone cold, too. On my investigation of 343 Industries, I got an anonymous tip. It said that they had three pillars of no good corruption as a company, and I set out to investigate each pillar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I'd like to ask that you subscribe to a little gumshoe detective like me. It makes all this detective work that much easier. Thank you. September 14th, 2010. I distinctly remember my mom letting me take the day off from school. It was a really cool move for her to do. I earned a little bit of pocket change from my frequent walks up to the local convenience store. Four bucks. That's what it took to get a round trip to the city and back. Providence, Rhode Island. It's a cool little slice of a city. Very artsy. Very grungy. I hopped on the bus and within 30 minutes planted my 15 year old feet right back down like Neil Armstrong making a small step. Today was a very important day. A day to remember. I made my way to that great glass window, up the steps that led to its shoulder, and on a sweet late summer's day, I marched into GameStop with a purpose. To pick up Halo Reach. Bungie's final effort. This game deeply motivated me. I thought it would be the only thing I would ever need again. It meant a lot to me when I saw those credits roll and I'd finished off Bungie's final passion product in my favorite franchise. There was a sense within me shortly after its launch though. A sense that Bungie had become disgruntled to work on the IP. For lack of a better word, I kind of felt a sense of betrayal at the decisions they made for the core gameplay of Halo Reach. That's a story for another time though. The long and short of it is, I was tired of Bungie's leadership with Halo. It felt like New Blood could be nothing but a good thing. So naturally, all I was left with was my imagination. What could come next? While the world wrestled with the impending doom of an election, I slaved away at a new experience. Freshly home from the midnight launch of Halo 4, I quickly got to playing. I remember distinctly that I blasted through the campaign in a manner of hours. I loved it sincerely, but I couldn't rationalize some things. I didn't fully understand why the art style had no correlation to the past. I told myself that it was just a new company wanting to put their stamp on things. But within a matter of minutes of finishing the campaign, I knocked on my brother's door. I wanted to play what he was playing instead. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I could have opted to play Halo 4, but why would I play the multiplayer when all it was was as close to a Call of Duty clone as it could possibly be? Why would 343 make a Halo multiplayer like that? Again, I told myself that it was them really trying to do something different. But deep down, I understood the intentions fully. I held my breath. They'll get it next time for sure. On an otherwise uneventful day in 2014, I got my copy of Halo The Master Chief Collection. I writhed in anger as I finished my installation because the multiplayer that I'd waited hours to play and was so eager to get back into was fundamentally broken. Campaign co-op? Unplayable. It was dumbfounding. Only a year later and two years into my adult life, I was miserable. I'd moved to Florida, then back to Rhode Island yet again. I was staying with a friend and working a pretty dead-end job at a local retail outlet stocking shelves. 
I sucked at it. I don't really know how you can suck at stocking shelves, but I really did. It was, it was awful. I dropped 60 hard-earned bucks on a pristine copy of Halo 5 Guardians. Weird title, but I don't hate it. I played through the campaign and beat it in what felt like 45 minutes. It wasn't, but it sure felt like it. All I remember was thinking, neat. Now we wait for the next one, I guess. Within a day or two, I realized how much I hated it. The story contradicted itself, and it felt like whoever wrote the wonderful and elegant story of Halo 4 was the opposite of whoever wrote 5. As if 5's whole objective was to raise a middle finger to any of 4's story developments. At least the multiplayer was good, though. Weird that they couldn't get both done. Oh well. Multiplayer was borked, and now campaign is borked this time. They'll have to get it next time, for sure. Let's wind the clock back a bit for this one. I want you to understand why this one stings so much. In my most recent video, I talked about the June 28th reveal of the Slipspace engine and Halo Infinite. This is the trailer that teased everything that Legacy fans were looking for. Classic armor, art style, music, weapons, everything. On top of that, it made a very clear point to whet our appetites about a full-blown, open-worlded Halo experience, featuring wildlife that would roam in herds. These huge megafauna and massive open spaces would redefine Halo's original destiny. This trailer read like a wink and nod toward Halo Combat Evolved's Halo level, famous for its shocking level of open-endedness. It set the template for how to use Halo's sandbox, give people the tools, and let them do the work. Instead, we got an open-ended experience with a linear story and individual islands with nothing to do within them except shoot at aliens to save someone or beat a boss or capture an area for your map. The campaign was a disappointment, but as a game with a 10-year plan, where the campaign was a trench, the multiplayer was and is a crater roughly the size of the meteor that wiped out 70% of life on the planet, there is simply nothing to do in the game. And why should there be? It's okay to forgive someone if they get caught in a silly lie once or twice. I didn't steal that bag of chips. Sorry, but I don't know who shaved your cat or why my razor has your cat's hair all over it. But when you've got compounded things that consistently show a pattern, that's no longer a harmless act. It's getting caught with your hand in the cookie jar repeatedly. Let's talk turkey. From the beginning, 343 has been acting in bad faith. They keep reaching into that very same cookie jar, and when they get caught, after they've gobbled up nearly all the cookies, mind you, they simply lower their heads in shame. You got me. I really did stick my hand in the cookie jar. I'm sorry. I won't let it happen again. For the purpose of today's video, have you ever watched Did You Know Gaming? They're a cool channel that has people come on and then they talk about a certain subject and they tell you interesting facts about certain games or game development. Well today, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that I'm on Did You Know Gaming and I'm doing my own special little Did You Know Gaming segment. The topic of discussion today will be 343 Industries Development Decisions. If you want citation for any of these fun facts, be sure to check the wall of citation in the description. Now without further ado, did you know? Prior to development on Halo 4 beginning, Microsoft considered putting Gearbox to task with stewarding the sequel. You know, the people that butchered the Halo CE port. Did you know? Master Chief's suit redesign in Halo 4 was explained as being nanobots, despite never once being acknowledged in the game whatsoever. I suppose those same nanobots must have redesigned the half-destroyed Forward Unto Dawn, the weapons the UNSC used, and the armor the UNSC used as well, seeing as how the weapons in the interior design of the Forward Unto Dawn match the new architecture and design philosophy that the Halo universe has post-Halo Reach. Clever little nanobots. 
Did you know? I can't legally use any music from Halo 4, the MCC's remastered soundtrack, or Halo 5 because Microsoft didn't grant permission to content creators to use them. And anyone who does will get takedowns, demonetization, or copyright strikes. I know this because my cool Halo 4 sequence in one of my videos got the whole video demonetized. <laughs> Did you know? Halo 4 was initially intended to be put on the Xbox One, but was rushed to market. Did you know? In Halo 3, all armor was free. In Halo 5, it would cost you roughly a thousand real US dollars to unlock every piece of armor at launch. This doesn't factor in the numerous additional armor pieces added to the game over the years. Did you know? Halo 5's DLC maps were free, as a result of 343 monetizing customization. Really sweet, right? Except that the vast majority of maps added to Halo 5 were remixes, where 343 would reuse assets of one map and basically make an alternative variant of said map. But you can assure yourself that the pay-to-win Warzone mode received pristine new maps with completely original areas. Did I mention the pay-to-win part? Did you know? It's possible that Halo Infinite's development costs were upward of $500 million. Side note, this figure was posted in 2020 prior to Halo Infinite's full year delay, so it's possible it's even higher than that. Did you know? In 2020, with five years of development under its belt, Allegedly, it stands to reason that Halo Infinite's development hit the reset button multiple times, as evidenced by the footage of this early apparent build of the game dating back to 2019, featuring old boxed out zones. That Halo Infinite had switched game directors three times, and had seen an executive producer depart as well. All by 2020. Did you know? 343 Industries has never seemingly fully understood exactly why people weren't pleased with the July reveal in 2020, and for all intents and purposes, fully planned on releasing the game in 2020. She said it was an incredibly painful decision to delay Halo Infinite because it would have been great for the business, for the business, literally using the word business, to have Halo Infinite there with the launch of Xbox Series X and Series S. Bonnie Ross just sees it as a business. Only caving due to overwhelming public pressure. Did you know? Despite over a year's delay to Halo Infinite, the game launched with the lowest amount of content since Halo 2, a title that launched over 17 years prior. Did you know? Halo Infinite will have received a collective two additional maps to its live service in over a year of being released, yet it will have received likely hundreds of paid cosmetics. Did you know? Halo Infinite's campaign DLC will allegedly not even arrive until 2025. Take this one with a grain of salt, but there is a source for this that has repeatedly had reputable claims in the form of Sean W's anonymous source, again linked in the description. All I'll say is that it's coming sometime after 2024. Did you know, being a fan of the Halo franchise is more and more painful every day? Nestled deep in the Pacific Northwest, cradled within a sea of green pillars of pine, in the birthplace of Halo, lies a little corner of the world where hundreds of talented artists are squandered daily in the very same office that artists were unfettered at Bungie in their ability to create lies a cynical, exclusive club of a select few who oversee many. This club is 343 Management. Now, make no mistake, 343 Industries is a company filled with incredible individuals who put everything they could into Halo. But when leadership doesn't have much concern for the well-being of its workers and cares simply to appear to have concern about social issues and the like on one hand, then on the other allows an emblem celebrating the emancipation of African Americans and allows it to release being named after a monkey, no I'm not kidding, you have to wonder, have you ever thought about working for 343 Industries? Well, if you get the gig, enjoy it while it lasts. Because unless you are exceptionally lucky, you won't be working there for longer than a year and a half. Should you get the temporary contract job, your experience will likely be miserable. Look no further than Glassdoor.com, an industry standard site for reviewing your workplace experience, where 343 Industries currently sits at a 2.6 out of 5 stars rating. But don't just take my word for it, take the word from the horse's mouth. 
Just take a look at this review from March 6th. Pros of working at 343 Industries. I have some great coworkers. These people will be friends for life. They taught me a lot and are nice and interesting. Cons. 343 used to be great. Managers were positive and approachable. My team and I were given challenging, interesting work. A few months ago, something happened. Even positive managers became aggressive and critical. Workloads became suffocating. It was a great place to work, but now it's a job where I watch the clock waiting to leave. My team thought it would get better after the game launched, but it has only gotten worse. This is over most teams and some of our key employees are starting to leave for other companies. Advice to management? Let staff give anonymous reviews of managers. This next employer review comes from someone who worked there for two years shy of a decade. Pros of working at 343. Good pay, good benefits, if you are full-time, what you would expect in a big corporation. Working in a big IP, which will likely look good on resume. Some good, talented people who you can be friends with and learn from. Cons. Unqualified leadership. Some upper management has little to no idea how video games are made. They are there because they know how to play the corporate game. Hard to advance within the studio. You are either hired as a senior or a lead or you try to play the corporate game, which is ironic for a studio who constantly celebrate diversity and inclusion. What's diversity if you just want to conform everyone to a corporate model instead of let them do what they do best? Little to no accountability. Leadership has little to no accountability. When they made a bad decision that caused downstream teams working longer hours, they usually just brushed it off with a half-hearted sorry or worse, found a scapegoat. While the problematic people were often still there collecting big paychecks and bonuses. Advice to management? Listen to the people who are actually doing the work. Don't just trust whatever middle management is telling you, and stop covering for people who are friendly with you. At this rate, you will end up with an empty shell studio, people left without anyone asking them why. That's a huge issue. Now that's not the only source that I have. I personally know devs from 343 and have discussed development in relatively vague terms with them on multiple occasions. Obviously, I don't want them violating NDAs that they've legally signed, so they don't want to tell me too much, which is understandable. I don't know how I can explicitly verify this, but if I'm contacted by any official sources, I can 100% confirm. I know they are legit because I know them and have even played Halo with them. They tell me of everything that Glassdoor reviews indicate. A brutal work experience, building on a terrible engine. A toxic workplace filled with leaders who don't have much concern for the people below them, and seem to hold their own opinion in absurdly high regard, with little to no care for anyone below them. But oh, those are just examples. They could be exaggerated, you might say. I couldn't possibly have any concrete examples of leadership at 343 being toxic in any form, could I? Well. A Halo fan by the name of at HaleyX24 has tweeted before writing this a rather involved thread on 343's toxic leadership. It details, quite studiously, pretty disgusting examples of one Frank O'Connor's misconduct, not in private, but in a public forum, forum Z, with fun examples such as this discussion on Christina Hendricks, where he says, and I quote, I would feed her pie and jump on her like a bouncy castle. He has two other examples where he liberally uses Bouncy Castle, weird verbiage obsession. Then there's the blatant Islamophobia. In regards to a thread on Muslim violence, he says, I know if they had been Christian, there is no way they could have beaten a child to death. Only Muslims do that. It's an epidemic. But even those could be taken out of context, right? Surely he hasn't had any action taken against him before, right? Wrong. He is banned from Reset Era and NeoGAF unable to make posts on either. Prior to his current banning, he has been banned several times in the past. I highly recommend you look into Haley X24's Twitter thread, as it's extremely detailed and what I've discussed is practically just a tip of the iceberg, and again, the link to that will be in the description. That's not the only example of weirdness coming from 343 regarding gross misconduct. A heavily prevalent modder in the Halo scene by the name of GameSheet13, one that was actually consulted during Halo MCC's PC port, had a storied history of blatantly racist dialogue. It was literally just sitting there on his Twitter account for the world to see. This is someone who repeatedly used the N-word, and seemed to balk at the idea that the word rape should be omitted from Halo. This person was offended at a Black History Month message being featured in MCC. 
but surely he wasn't officially on 343's dev team. He wouldn't be implicitly connected to any of this now, would he? Wrong again, sadly. Here's an example of a 343 Industries employee who was actively working at the company and had a dialogue with this person, who in response to the user being unable to access the early build of MCC and throwing a temper tantrum on Twitter about it, said, and I quote, I have no idea where this has come from. GC has not returned my messages. GC has been a tremendous help to us over the past year, and I highly value him on both a professional and personal level. Sometimes people just have bad days, so I hope he chooses to reach back out to me. This is after everything that this user has said on Twitter. So when we say things such as, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, in essentially any context, I think it's safe to say we're swallowing a sandwich made entirely of feces. No more. What would I do to fix things at 343? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I would probably shake 343 down from the ground up, reevaluate leadership, clean house up top more than anything. I mean, at the very least, install responsible people who on some level have experience with stewarding a large franchise instead of, oh, I don't know, putting someone in charge that is your friend and has no experience running a franchise whatsoever. Hello, Mr. Phil Spencer. I'm talking to you directly. I can't think of a single example of a company failing at something five to six times in a row, depending on your definition of failure, and not being reorganized, let alone reprimanded. From my perspective, the entirety of 343's run as stewards of Halo has seen absolutely no consequences from Microsoft. This is a company that has zero accountability and zero repercussions for any negative actions. What happened to this employee that allowed the Juneteenth emblem to be named after a monkey? Why did one of your employees have nothing but kind things to say about a blatant racist? Why is one of your top decision makers posting on forums like some human rat hybrid swinging a nine iron on a golf course, talking about women as if they're a piece of furniture, making broad generalizations about the Muslim community? Where's your limit? At what point does someone see consequences? Is the problem simply that you just don't understand the concept? Surely if you're capable of running a franchise, you're capable of grasping something as simple as being fundamentally wrong. With all of this in the rear view, I'd like to hear why exactly you deserve to be in charge of Halo 343. I'd love to sit down with some of you and have a chat with you. Maybe we can have a little live stream. But really, I'd love to sit down and chat sometime. You don't owe me this, but you owe it to the community that you pretend to love. had it. Right in the palm of my hands. It wasn't quite the smoking gun I was looking for, but maybe it'd be enough to shake things up for once. I built up the courage to do what needed to be done. The truth needed to be revealed. And I didn't care what else happened. My credibility was on the line. My career. Everything. None of that mattered anymore. Because it's never been about me. It's been about what's right and what's wrong. I know what's right, but my name isn't the Dev Detective. If by some miracle you've made it this far into the video, I want to say thank you so much. Your ability to stick to it for this long is admirable. This video is erratic, insane, and probably nonsensical. So if you did stick around this long, I thank you so much. And I do want to just ask one last time, while I just to be a little cheeky, for you to hit that sub button. Thanks for watching.